Hi, folks. It's Bill and Jonathan. Wendy yes. is on her way uh, to vacation land. Uh, that said, now is the time to be considering short-term term rentals because uh, actually most of the country uh, in destination areas, there. it's hard to find any places. Well, yeah, we were we were just in... Uh... Uh, well, I was, I was in Clearwater, and I mean, to rent an Airbnb for one night was five, six hundred dollars. Yeah, it, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. There's a, a shortage of uh, short term rentals in a lot of areas and, and not even destination areas. So um, in, a, in a little bit, when we get back, we're going to uh, have a video of uh, Wendy and Walter Walford uh, talking about uh, their current and it's it's current. It's only about a week, a week old. Uh, about short-term rentals in, in different areas. So right after this, we'll be back. We paid a lot of money for that graphic and we want to make sure that we get it in. That was, that was good. That was a good one. <laughs> that was pretty cool. So uh, thank you. For joining us on the Real Estate Investor Show, Hard Money for Real Estate Investors. Mm -hmm. uh, we are uh, lenders in the Southeast. We're Carolina Capital Management. Uh, we make loans to real estate investors. And again, it's the Southeast only. If you're interested in borrowing money, go to carolinahardmoney.com and click on the Apply Now tab. If you're a passive investor looking for passive returns, click on the Accredited Investor tab. Don't forget, to like, share, subscribe, hit the, bell. hit the bell. And don't forget to sign up for Wednesday with Wednesday. With Wednesday. I get tongue tied every time I say that because there's too many W's in the. They make something for that. <laughs> Uh, anyway, there's a link right there in the chat uh, to her calendar. She has uh, booked up several months in advance. So go ahead and get your spot. What she does is she donates uh, her time to talk to you guys about anything real estate. So uh, mm -hmm. go ahead and get in line for that. Uh, we do have a comment or question section in the uh, either the right side or underneath your screen, depending on the platform that you're viewing us from. Uh, happy to answer any questions that we can. Yep. So um, we wanted to talk about short-term vacation rentals at this time because we're, you know, we're Everyone, all thinking about vacation. We're all either going yeah. on it or have, or, or in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yep. <clears throat> so we thought this would be a good time to talk about that. Uh, again, Wendy is already on her way. And the last time she was on her way to that same destination, the, Signal was not very good to, to bring her in because no. it's on the way to the country. Yeah, it's <laughs> and, driving through a whole lot of nothing. So we decided that, that we would insert uh, a video here. Uh, it's an interview that uh, Wendy and Walter Walford did about their uh, short-term rentals. I know uh, Walter has several yep. uh, in Mississippi, Jackson, Mississippi, which again, you wouldn't think is a destination, uh, but a couple of his short-term rentals are right on this big major lake. It's a beautiful place. Okay. Just got to watch out for those swimming logs. <laughs> yep. We call them alligators, but they look like swimming logs. That's right. Yeah. So, so uh, if you're taking a dip in there, you need to watch out for those logs that get closer and closer to you. So we're going to go ahead and uh, try and play this video now. Enjoy. Hey, Wendy Sweet here with Carolina Capital Management. My side gig is short-term vacation rentals. How would you like to learn from the top short-term rental people in the nation? You're going to get that opportunity. We're actually doing a small venue short-term vacation training, and it's going to be incredible. There are five other people there that will be recording some pretty incredible information about short-term rentals, every single topic you can possibly imagine. I'm going to talk about uh, short-term vacation rentals that are located within three miles of my office in dinky little downtown Rock Hill, why they're coming, 
uh, what we're doing in a house, how we figure out which house we're going to buy, the due diligence that we do on that. And then I'm also going to be talking about how to finance those properties. There are a multitude of ways that it can be done. And I'm going to share as many of those ways with you as I possibly can. In addition to that, there's so many other incredible people that are going to be able to share information with you too uh, about everything you can imagine from from two day stays to ninety day stays. It's just ama- just amazing what you're going to see. So, if you're interested in um, getting this video for yourself, because we're recording these. There's only 20 people that are going to be at this venue, so we have to record it to be able to share it with so many of you. You're going to get that opportunity to buy that video. <laughs> all right, Walt Wofford here with a an all-star team, Pam Whitworth, Alicia Merriman, Wendy Sweet, Al Williamson, and me, Wally Pop. We are going to do something to kick the COVID bug to the curb with an event that we're having in Jackson, but you're, the, if you're watching this video, you're not invited to the event. We intentionally decided to have it uh, for 20 people and we're gonna videotape it. So uh, it's, it's a two day event that we're gonna have. And so each of the presenters will have a 45 minute presentation followed by a 30 minute Q and A. And then we're gonna have over 10 sessions. And so let me just show you, it's gonna cost 197. And we'll deliver the videos within a week of the event, plus plus the handouts, any slides that we have. And you'll get all that in a, an electronic version so you can watch it all you want to watch it. Now, so let's kick it off. Pam, tell us about yes. yourself and your topic. I'm Pam Whitworth from Waco, Texas. And I want to talk about the five stages of hosting and, uh, and what stage that you might be in and how to identify it. And how you uh, make a decision on whether you want to accelerate that or maybe maybe you're perfectly happy where you're, where you're at today. Um, I'm in about stage four on my hosting, and I'm working on, on, on the fifth stage right now, which has to do a whole lot with systems and organization and uh, setting up a business to be scalable. So I think as most of us start out, we, we become more of a side hustle. We're all in real estate, and we, we hear about, Airbnb, that was me in 2012. I heard about Airbnb and I had a little cottage in my backyard. And so I thought, well, that sounds cool. And I put a bathroom in it and just started advertising it. In 2012, there were no statistics. There were no comps. There was, there was nothing to go by. It was just a Hail Mary, just try this out. And so I started out as a side hustle host. You know, I was plenty busy with my regular job and I just decided to do a Airbnb in the backyard and give it a try. I thought I'd do about a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars a month, and I think the first year I booked thirty thousand, and then the next year thirty-five thousand, the next year forty thousand. Then I realized really had something special going on here, and then of course Airbnb started to accelerate from there. And there's a traditional host uh, that, which is the host that Airbnb had in mind, uh, I think, when they started all of this, and uh, and that's a person that. Um, identifies with their Airbnb. And then it may be in a situation like this with my, with the cottage. I think I used to be in that position. Uh, I was one that did everything. I was one that met the guests. I talked to them and my identity Pam, wrapped up in the... Pam, yeah. I hate to interrupt you. My grandson's got something to say to me. Can you just hold a second? <laughs> sure. Yes, to potty. What do you have to say? Um, We're leaving in a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Do good. Take care. I am too. <laughs> yeah. I'm leaving a little bit too. Sorry, Pam. That's all right. So uh, the traditional host is more of a person that is more, uh, their identity is wrapped up in it. And so my personal goal with this, uh, as I've begun to evolve with this business and realize the potential of the income is I want to accelerate to five to where I have a very scalable business and a business to sell. And that's that's where I'm going with it. With COVID, um, I had about 20 properties. We were I owned six. We were managing the rest. Um, I lost 10 of them. So I was down to 10 properties and six of them I own. So I really didn't have much after COVID. We refunded a whole bunch of money. The bank account went on empty. And so we had I had to just kind of dog pedal for that year. 
Last month, we had the biggest month we've ever had with fewer properties. We had some of our units double in bookings. Wow. And so the, the income potential, we're, we're charging 30% to uh, manage. So I'm making more off of most of the properties that I manage than the ones I actually own. So my goal is to work up to the highest level of hosting. And so I'm going to talk about the different types of hosts, where you are, uh, whether you're just a side hustle or the traditional, or maybe you're a hectic host. I stayed in the hectic host position for several years to where you just kind of did the Hail Mary and you hope it all worked out and the place was clean and nobody complained or found a bug or a mouse or something like that. And so I've been in the hectic host position for a long time. And fortunately, I've risen above that. But we talk about that. And I'm going to talk a little bit about if you do want to scale your business, and, uh, and it's something that you're willing to do and do the systems, uh, there, there comes a point to where you can have, have a very sellable business. And uh, there's a lot of the bigger companies, when you get 50 units, uh, that's when they'll come into a town and start buying out these smaller companies. So that's, that's my goal. We're, we're almost back up to the 20 mark again and rising. But uh, we are using, uh, we're going to, I'm going to go over in the next session about some tools and things, but we're using some tools that are just amazing that I wish I'd, I'd used years and years ago. So a lot of potential there if you want to accelerate beyond the side hustle or the traditional host and step up beyond the hectic host and, and make, it, it, this can be actually very simple to where you can step out of your business and just manage it and manage it with VAs. We're starting to use more VAs and it's, and it's working beautifully. So. I'm going to go into depth on about the different types of hosting and, and how you can do it and where you can hire some people and uh, take it to the next level. All right. So, Pam, let me see if I got this straight. So you increased your sales by double booking. Is that what you said? <laughs> we had some of our units uh, <clears throat> in That May. was a joke. That was a oh, joke. Yeah. <laughs> no, not double bookings. <laughs> I thought you said double the bookings. All right. Alicia, hit it. All right, guys. My name is Alicia Merriman, and I'm out of Huntsville, Alabama. And just like Pam and Al, Wendy, I am an extended stay and short-term rental owner. And um, yeah, so I have taken it this year to a new level where I am starting to optimize all the profit centers and the properties that I already have or the ones that are coming down the pipeline. And part of the way that I'm doing that uh, are a few out of the box ideas that maybe you've never touched on. And um, one of which would be adding a billboard in front of your property, you know, especially if you've got a high traffic area, like I intentionally sourced out a property that was on the highway, just particularly for, that was one of the reasons that the property itself was a great opportunity. Um, things like adding vending machines, being able to rent out detached structures or even making that detached structure deed it and give it its own parcel number. I've also been taking flips and subdividing that property. And on the sale of the flip, I'm getting that land free and clear. And I have every intention of creating either short-term sites um, to build. So things like glamping. If, have you ever heard of that, Wally? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the returns are good, man. Uh, I'm, I'm planning on building some new extended stay and short term rentals. And I've been able to actually get a lot of my land for free. And I've got a few ways of how I'm actually doing that. And uh, another way where I'm getting the land one parcel for free, let's say with the a subdivide and selling that, uh, selling the flip, keeping part of the land free and clear, and then wrapping up an owner finance. And letting that owner finance the equity that's coming from that pay for um, the build, right? So I'm doing a lot of different things right now where um, a lot of moving parts where I'm really optimizing every angle that I can in my properties. So that's yeah. great. That's super. All right. So session three will be all of us. I'm going to moderate it and at technology and automation. So I'll give you some categories before we talk and then you, you just will go down there and have somebody work in the screen, typing it in as we go through these. Or if you guys want to uh, make your list ahead of time, we'll add that. It'll be, that'll be interesting. We'll find out better and best technology and automation. 
All right, Wendy Sweet. Sweet Wendy. Wendy. Sweet. I am uh, with Carolina Capital Management. I'm, by day, I'm a lender, a hard money lender. And by night, I am a short-term rental freakazoid. And, and I, can, I can credit Pam Whitworth for getting me in this, this business in the first place. I, I, if you haven't been in any of Pam's houses, you need to go in there. It's eye candy everywhere. It's just the coolest place ever. She just exploded my mind on all the things that you can do. Now, she's in a great destination area in Waco. I'm stuck in little dinky Rock Hill, South Carolina. And guess what? I am kicking it. <laughs> we, have, we have 13 properties now in uh, Rock Hill, South Carolina. All but two of them are within three miles of my office. And that's what I love. It's people say, well, who comes there? Well, we're going to have a whole session on talking about why people come to dinky little Rock Hill. And it's not just Rock Hill. It's any small town. People travel for all kinds of reasons. And, and you, 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 you just have list after list after list as to why they're coming. I, I want to go after those people. One of the reasons why I really like the small town type business or the non-destination type business is because when COVID hit, I had, oh, I don't know, 50% of the people that were booked canceled. And within two weeks, I was booked again. Not only was I booked again, but the COVID, COVID year, the whole COVID year was the best year I ever had. Because I had a whole new clientele coming in and staying at my properties. It was, it was just truly, truly a blessing for me on that. So I really want to talk about um, all of that. And I also want to kind of get down and dirty as how do I find a property? What numbers am I using when I decide that this is a deal or it's not a deal? Because you know, we want to be cautious about the investments that we're making. We can't just count on appreciation. We've got to make sure it can stand alone as a rental property on its own. So I really want to talk about that part of the business as well, because, you know, I love my exit strategy or my plan, which is plan A, set it up as a short term. But gosh, if plan A backfires, I want to be able to have something to fall back on. So got to have B, C and D in place as well. Thank you, Wendy. Al Williamson. He's muted. There you go. I think you're muted, Al. All right. You guys missed the drum roll. Oh, <laughs> well, let's let's hear it. <laughs> All right. Hey, I'm Al Williamson. I'm, I am in Sacramento, California. I run a corporate housing company called Easy Corporate Housing. And I'm responsible for the marketing. So it's all on me and my, and my, uh, my team. So I want to share with the folks coming about how you can um, keep your extended stay rental filled without worrying about vacancies. That's the thing I focus on. So I'm in the, I focus on 30 days and longer. So that extended stay market. So um, one thing we're going to talk about is, is how you can market so you can ha have complete domination over your area. I know that's not going to be good for the folks and um, everyone's in Jackson. I'm not sure that's going to be good. Hey, we're topic, cooperating. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. So we're going to do that. And, you know, we can make the big corporations beg for mercy because they just can't can't keep up with this. So we're going to do that in that 40 minute slot that I have. And we're going to talk about some three overlooked ways to to uh, make Google rank you number one. So so it's going to help you break away from Airbnb and, and really uh, be market independent without any reliance on uh, other uh, online travel agencies. And the, the third thing in that first session is going to be how to how to turn your family and friends into like your biggest, fiercest promoters. Let them get in on the action. Um, so that's going to be an exciting thing. So I'm looking forward to that. That's my first. That's my first one. All right. All right. So and then I got session six. So this is our own short term rental arbitrage. So this would be an interesting study of we like the income, right? from the short-term rentals. How about let's just take it tax-free? And I'm gonna show you how to set it up and do that. And um, we, we've we got a two unit right down from my house that we paid market rent for. And that's 1250 a month, a two bedroom, one bath. And we're routinely bringing in 2400 a month and that's our owned arbitrage. So show you how to put seven, $750 a month in your retirement account without debt. Is that 
How many of those you want? <laughs> More, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So, Alicia, next topic. All right. So my next topic is going to be about unique stays and uh, the outdoor collections under Airbnb. Have you ever scrolled down and whenever you're searching as a guest and there's actually where you can normally search for just regular houses. And then down below it, there is a button that says unique stays. Well, if you've actually never clicked on that link, you'll find a lot of um, opportunities that are very, very unique. And if you look at the, the numbers associated with these types of dwellings that are generally tiny dwellings, as investors, you know, the smaller the, the dwelling generally, especially if you built it, it's going to be cheaper to develop. And these are unique in that most of them are things like Mongolian huts, their geodomes, their teepees, their yurts, they are tree houses. Uh, there are some of them that are actually hobbit holes. Of course, uh, like what Michael Hicks is doing up in Tennessee, Chattanooga, it's shipping container houses. So these out of the box ideas are bringing home just insane returns on what compared to what you actually got in the property. And um, so I want to dive deep and really express and do my own research and be able to share that with people on what I exactly I intend to do myself here locally and as well as what I think the returns will be. This isn't something that I have done yet, but this is something that I hope to be able to share and at least plant seeds and ideas with others as to how you can get in this market and about what you can expect your returns to be on different products. So I am now the proud owner of Huntsville Glamping dot com hey, I know. and uh yeah i really plan to tap into that market i've already got eight acres right outside the city and then i got another six so i am slowly collecting up property and i'm doing it in a very uh, a very wise way in my opinion i've leveraged and i've intentionally selected the locations for example let's say that you selected a an area where there's it's not commercial like you can't exactly just rent out dwellings but maybe it's deemed ag so what stops you from actually having a petting zoo on that property at your rental and leveraging that opportunity okay you could do that now you are deemed ag because there's ag there are animals there so little things like that that i've kind of learned um along the way that in my research as well as things like this is the opposite of what I thought it would be. I I kind of thought that if I was going out to stay at a place that was glamping or any of these kind of um, untraditional dwellings, that I would want like privacy, tranquility, you know, kind of like an intimate experience. That's actually not true. People apparently seem to get a little bit wigged out whenever they can't see another dwelling. So they like to have multiple yurts within eye distance. That's actually the opposite of what I would have assumed, right? So little mm. tidbits like that, I think, are going to make a big difference. But with that little tip, well, heck, that's even better to put multiple property, multiple, multiple dwellings on one property. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm deep in the throes of my research and I hope that everyone can grow from it. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you, Alicia. All right, Wendy. Well, you know, I mentioned earlier that uh, by day I am a covert hard money lender. And uh, so I'm kind of like the money lady. I'm always looking for ways to finance stuff. So that's one of the things that, that we're going to talk about. We're going to get in really deep on how to finance. There's so many different ways that you can finance these options, whether it's land that Alicia's talking about, um, whether it's using somebody's uh, low dollar IRA or big dollar IRA, or um, there's big lenders out there, there's small lenders out there, there's a way to combine all of that with seller financing. There's, there's so many different options out there. And that's what we're going to talk about are all the different ways that you can finance a short-term rental. Excellent. All right. So we got Al. Yeah. So for a, a, coming back with once you're up and going, once you know how to keep the place filled, 
well, how do you operate for long term? So I'm just going to touch on that. So we'll be talking about um, how you can operate a six-figure uh, extended stay of rental business without feeling frazzled and maintain it for absolutely for free. So I'm going to bring that to you. I'm going to bring to you like um, the small things that you need to do that really spins the flywheel. And that's what you want to do is get that flywheel, that money flywheel going. And then um, the processes that you, that you can use to put things on autopilot. We're going to go over those. And then um, how you can schedule small surprises, things like that, that really nudge your, your customer into being super loyal, repeat repeat clients for you. So that'll be the, um, can't wait to bring that. Can't wait to awesome. see everybody. Let's do this. Well, and then session 10, we'll have a Q&A at the end. Now, uh, let's be honest. Aren't we all pretty selfish? We want to know from, learn from other people. Yes. <laughs> So that's why we're sharpening each other's. Just this, here. just this little powwow got my brain back open. Alicia's got me all excited about the glamping because I live on a farm and I have a tiny house on my farm. But now I'm thinking, oh, I need to set up some campsites <laughs> <laughs> and let them take care of my pets. They there can feed go. my chickens and clean out the, the <laughs> horse stall and do whatever they want. <laughs> Well, we we could do that already with a couple of hours. We got some raccoons that come in every night in our <laughs> trash cans. <laughs>Interesting start off. <laughs> we had a little bit of technical issues, but it, it worked out well. We are going to try to get you the information so uh, you can sign up. I, I know they're going to be doing videos on this. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure if it's going to be a live event as well uh, on Zoom, uh, but uh, I know they're going to have videos available for that. There's a lot of good information in there. Um, I want to thank you guys. Did you want to add anything? No, I say it's a great thing to. It once we get the information up, sign up for it, learn it. Um, if you're at all interested in short-term rentals, you will, you will learn a lot. Well, well, just my little tidbit at the end. A anytime you buy a property uh, in order to do a short-term rental, the first thing that you need to do is make sure that it will work as a long-term rental because you, you, you always want multiple exit strategies. Well, the, in the, sh like the shortest way possible, when you're buying a short term rental property, don't buy it as a long term rental. Cause if you're buying it as a long term rental, it always makes sense. Um, if you're buying it because it's like, Oh, we can make 5,000 a month on this. Don't do that. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't, <laughs> sometimes uh, especially it doesn't. if you're buying them in destination areas where uh -huh. uh, they tend to be a higher dollar properties. Uh, if you can't long term rent it and still cash flow it, uh, don't do that. Yep. All right. Uh, thanks again for joining us on the real estate investor show. Uh, hard money for private or what is it? Hard money for real estate investors. <laughs> I always forget our stupid show's name. Our stupid uh, we, show. Wow. That tells <laughs> how you really feel. Bill. We are Carolina Capital Management. We are lenders in the Southeast. If you're interested in borrowing money, go to carolinahardmoney.com and click on the apply now tab. If you are a passive investor looking for Passive returns, click on the accredited investor tab. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, hit the bell and sign up for Wednesday with Wendy. Awesome. I said it without screwing it up. That's pretty good. good Listen. Great. Okay. I still had room to screw it up. <laughs> uh, enjoyed this show. Uh, we'll see you. We got another one coming up at uh, one o'clock mm -hmm. and uh, we will see you then. Have a great day.